Thank you. Certainly, if you have any, any questions, uh, David will be presenting tonight at, um, at 7.30 uh, in uh, room 3.11, uh, 3.10, sorry. Um, I'd like now to um, introduce our next speaker, who is uh, Dieter Muir-Dombois. He was uh, uh, winner of the Distinguished Service Award last year, and Dieter has... Uh, been a professor in plant ecology in the Department of Botany at the University of, New of, of Hawaii uh, since 1963. So he's had a very long career uh, working uh, in uh, this area. And uh, without further ado, since we are short of time, I'd just like to invite him to the stage and uh, give his presentation. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you all for coming. For the past 10 years, last decade, I have been promoting an international program called PABITRA, Pacific Asia Biodiversity Transect, a network that goes through all Pacific Islands that have some institutional connection and some budding researchers to work on biodiversity assessment. And we have a book coming out this fall by the Bishop Museum, which is called Biodiversity Assessment of Tropical Island Ecosystems, Babitra Manual for Interactive Ecology and Management with 13 chapters and 20 contributors. The inspiration came actually from the Hawaiian Ahu Pua'a concept. I don't think I have to explain that to this audience because it's in many words and in the newspapers and so on, just like the term ecosystem, we don't have to explain that anymore. And my talk today is actually focusing on civic cultural restoration, but I wanted to bring it into this broader framework of the Hawaiian Ahupu'a and its biological resource zones and the challenge for civic cultural restoration. <coughs> I would like to point out that I was really impressed when I looked further into the Hawaiian traditions, that the Hawaiians not only knew the names of many plants, but also that they had concepts for communities and ecological zones. And a good example is the book by Handy and Handy, and I show here these terms that have been used by Hawaiians for certain segments of ecological zones. There is, for example, what you see here, the Makawawao crater, it's called a pico, that's a navel, and uh, one can think about the importance of that for life. Then comes a zone which is called Kualono. Kua means distance, far away, also in history as well as in space. Kualono is sort of the broad back, and that is really the upper part of the shield volcano, which applies to Mauna Loa, uh, Mauna Kea, and Haleakala in particular. But when we go further down, 
we come into zones that are occupied by vegetation. For example, Maukele, also called Wow Maukele, that is the area where the big trees grow, the koa trees. And then comes the zone, in this particular case, Wow Akua, which is zone where the <coughs> ghosts are, or we might say also where God reigns, and that is actually translatable into what we now call the cloud forest. Then comes the Wa'u Nahele, which is a general watershed forest of the Ahupawa'a. Following down comes the Wa'u Amau, actually which means fern zone, but also Wau Kanaka in particular, where humans work, utilize the area and grow taro, sweet potato, etc. And then when we have further open areas, they are called Kula, for example. We have Kula Uka in the upland, Kula Kai towards the zone. The coastal zone is the Kaha Kai, Kai is the ocean. And, uh, what I want to talk about briefly is that we can work with these zones. There are ecosystems, actually, border ecosystems. Years ago, I <clears throat> came in 63, as Christopher said, and uh, my first task was to make a map of our Bible Kinos National Park and to illustrate what ecosystems we find there. And I made this diagram, which we still have published in our later book, the International Biological Program book in 1981, which was entitled Island Ecosystems, uh, Hawaiian Community Development. And uh, we recognize a few more areas there, but the upper portion is the Kualono, going up to the tree line ecosystem at about 8,500 feet, which is occupied by scattered Uhia Lehua trees, and that's sort of the Kua uh, Hia zone, Kua Hiva zone, where small trees grow in scattered formation. Then we come down to zone eight, for example, that would be Maukele or Waukele, actually the tall, big Uhia trees are growing there. Then we come to the Kipukapua Ulu, that's number nine, and then into the rainforest. So we have very similar but uh, different terminology for it. Now I go to the older island, this island, Oahu from the big island, and I go into the Kahana Ahupua'a, which we have used as a Pabitra site, Pacific Asia Biodiversity Transect site. We have sites in Fiji, in Samoa, in Palau, in Tahiti, and in the Marquesas, in our network, even in the Galapagos now. And the ideal of a site is the human support system as it was developed traditionally by the Hawaiians and very sophisticated then worked out. After fir first, they did some really wild exploration as well, shifting agriculture and so on, but as the population increased in size, they had to become stationary and they developed this sophisticated agriculture with the loi, the terraces and so on. I will just show you briefly pictures. This is an air view of uh, Kahana Ahupu'a'a, which is just 45 minutes a car ride from here. When visitors come, I usually take them there, and uh, they would like to see something of our natural environments. This is not totally natural anymore. This has been occupied for a very long time. Perhaps the first uh, people who settled there were coming 300 BC. So, but in 1600 about, they developed this very sophisticated agriculture with utilizing the stream, diverting it in form of owwise, little channels dug up and uh, developed this uh, very high productive 
agriculture with low ease. You can see some of these in the center there from the distance. And that is how it looks now. It has been very much abused in the past by cattle ranching. The, uh, the forest was burned in the beginning by Kanyue Ranch Company, for example, who had a lease on it. There have been four different dissertations on it, and I summarized these in a publication in Pacific Science a couple of years ago. And uh, it's very interesting how the ownership came from corporate ownership of this area of the Hawaiians to a single ownership by a lady called Mary Foster, who was married to the shipping magnet uh, Foster, who is now the Madsen Shipping Company. <clears throat> Uh, I also show here briefly only, because the time is short, the Ahu uh, model that uh, was put together by Luciano Minerbi. In the top part, you have actually, definitely everybody knows the terms Mauka to Makai, or Makai to Mauka. Uh, in the Mauka area, you have the forest zone, the Vau Nahele, is a fringe area of the Wau Akua, where the clouds are hovering all the time. And then comes below that the Wau Kanaka, and then the Kahakai. Those are the more or less terrestrial systems, but then we also have two important biological research zones, which are the Wau zones. Actually, the Kai zone is uh, not Wau, uh, but uh, uh, Kahawai means the freshwater stream system. Muliwai is the estuary where you have a mixing zone of seawater and freshwater. And then comes the Kai, the ocean. Actually, all these near shore belong to the Hawaiian uh, biological resource zones to make living sustainable as it was at the time. There have been in Kahana Valley from 700 to 1,000 Hawaiians have been living there until Europeans came. And then big changes happened. So now to the silvicultural challenge for watershed restoration, since I'm a vegetation ecologist and actually also a professional forester and forest ecologist originally, I'm very much concerned about silviculture, which is actually the application of forest ecology, or we could also say forest restoration. That's actually what silviculture is. It can be for commercial purposes, but if we are concerned here for silviculture, it would be primarily for watershed persons, definitely. And uh, so what should we do? And uh, I have a short formula. I've written a longer paper on that in Lionia, which is the journal of the Lion Arboretum. But I will summarize this briefly here. With regard to alien trees, one of the real culprit is the Albizia tree, which was introduced by, unfortunately, Harold Lion into the Lion Arboretum. And if you go to the Lion Arboretum, you drive over to Paradise Park, what you see there in the canopy is mostly Albizia. And that's a very unfortunate development. In fact, the Lion Arboretum crisis in 2004 was partly related to the presence of Albizia trees because, because they became dangerous for the people walking in the area. They are brittle and they break down. In so I suggest delimbing. We need arborists for that. Sinning, leaving the nurse locks on the ground because that was one item left out. The native ferns and trees often start on <laughs> nurse locks. And if the seed is not there anymore, we can inoculate them this seed, and we need to have weed control until the trees get up. We have to do reintroduction of native key species, kipuka style. By that I mean introducing tree ferns, five, six, eight, in a group, in a circle perhaps, fence around and monitor them because those are the sites where Ohia Lehua usually gets established. Fencing is necessary, monitoring is a form of research that needs to be done, 
we also can do scarifying, which brings up core in many cases, if core trees are still wrong. And then we have to watch that the stream, uh, uh, the debris is removed from the streams and that the flow of the waters are restored. Here we look into the arboretum and see the emerging Albizia trees, which are trouble and they have been cut down. What to do with them? They should be actually cut into segments, maybe even split open to rot a little bit more quickly and to form germination sites for native trees. You remember the disaster that we had in 2004 at the wood lawn bridge? It was all due to de debris piling up there and then diverting the stream over into the property of the university, causing multis, uh, million dollars of uh, damage. So that could have been avoided by proper silviculture by keeping the streams clean. Well, it was done. We need to have some action on this. Here's a picture of, oh, here are seedlings. I will just make a couple of important points. They are coming up on the tree fern trunks, fallen or standing. Very often, if you want to look for, oh, here are seedlings, look there. Here is a pocket on a kura tree where, oh, here are seedlings are coming up. They are starting mostly as epiphytes, in contrast to when they start on lava flows. Or you can see the split root that this shows that the tree has started higher up on something. And here also, again, this is on a 700-year-old lava flow. Rooting started epiphytically above ground here. And then here's a very tall one that started on, yes, I will go quickly. And here another one, still rooted over here. Again, the epiphytic relationship should be understood, and the tree fern or here relationship again. And also here, we've, and we look underneath, there is the log lying on the ground where the oh here flower is standing up. Concluding vision statement is preserving the Kua zones, those are the back zones, the mountain zones, removal of feral sheep and mufflin is a necessity. Restoring the Wao zones, which are the forested zones, actually including the Wao Kanaka and the Kahakai, inland and upland forests, and traditional agroecosystems, and restoring and cleaning the Wai zones, the Kahawai and Muliwai. That's all time I have. But by gosh, I'm in the time because I haven't even talked 20 minutes yet. Thank you very much for your attention. Hagalida o huleva ia e galawa e haka ano oleke ia o huno ke no ke haka la la ke ia manu ika o hu ika o hi ahamau me ho ahamau ita le o kale hua pane apane mai pahai ke ia mamu e.